Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing a starry flounder catching cook. As you know, I fish a lot in Puget Sound and I catch these fish often, but where I catch them, you really don't want to be eating these fish. But I went out to the coast and I caught one and I'm going to show you how I caught it. And then I'm going to cook it up as a flounder roll with a cheese sauce on top. Check out those bad boys. Now, one unusual thing about these fish is when you fillet them, you get two different types of meat from either side of the fish. I'm gonna try it out and see if there's any taste difference to the two sides. So stay tuned. I'm Brett and this is Peeling Line. Oh, wow. Look at that starry flounder. Oh yeah, I'm totally gonna keep this one. I've caught so many of these, but none have been uh, from an area that was good to keep them from. Being on the coast, I can actually keep this one. Sweet. In addition to your bottom fish, you're, you're allowed to keep five flat fish on top of those. So uh, this counts towards that, so I'm not over my limit. So I didn't record the filleting, but here's the filleted fish. And as you can see, it's a right-eyed starry flounder. Starry flounder can be either direction. Check out those two fillets. The one on the right is from the top and the one on the bottom is on the left. They're uh, very different textures and this one's even has a sort of a blue tinge like a lingcod or a cabazon. So I'm not gonna go off a recipe, but I've seen lots of recipes for rolled flounder, and a lot of them are just mayonnaise on the fish, rolled up, baked, and thrown a cheese sauce on top. So I'm gonna kinda do the same thing, but instead of using a mayonnaise, I'm gonna use a Middle Eastern garlic mayonnaise called tum. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but uh, all I know is it's absolutely delicious sauce. I have it almost every day with my lunches, so I'm gonna make a huge amount of it. And we'll start with making that. Oh shit. For this recipe, you're going to use egg whites. You're going to want to use raw egg whites, so it's good to pasteurize them. Although I've made this recipe with just egg whites and I didn't die. Although I'm not pregnant or uh, an old person or kid or whatever, so I got a healthy immune system. But today I'm going to pasteurize the eggs because I'm going to make a whole batch and I want to keep this for a while. So I want it to be uh, as free of salmonella as possible. So to pasteurize the eggs, I've got my sous vide circulator going. I'll show you that here now. Just uh, preheating the circulator to 140 degrees. I've got my egg whites. And I'm just going to use a Ziploc bag for this. So you need to put the egg whites in here for 
three and a half minutes. They're not cooking, that's a good thing. Okay, so there we go. It's been, uh, I actually left it for four minutes. Cooked a tiny bit, but uh, not too bad. So now I'm gonna let the egg whites cool, and in the meantime, I'm gonna juice this lemon. And now I'm gonna take this whole bulb of garlic and mince it up. This is the point where a lot of recipes differ. Um, I've seen as few as three cloves used to 30 cloves in different recipes, but I like to just mince it up and I'll flavor it by taste. I'll put half of it in there, see how it tastes, add some more. I don't want it too overpowering, only tasting like garlic. But I do like garlic, so I'll probably put a lot in there. So there's the garlic all peeled. So there's how fine I've chopped it. So first thing we do is you put the garlic, egg white, lemon juice, and salt in the food processor, and then slowly add avocado oil in the top. And I'm gonna mix this on low speed. Okay, look at that goodness. Okay, so I just want to taste it for salt now, but uh, that's pretty much it. Um, this stuff looks so delicious. Mm. Maybe a little too much garlic, but that's okay with me. I mean, look at that. It's just like garlic mayonnaise. It's so creamy. Okay, so I got my two fillets here. Just gonna put some salt on there. A little bit of white pepper. Some tarragon. And then the garlic sauce. I'm just going to roll these up. And just put some toothpicks in them. I'm gonna throw that in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes about. But I'm gonna use a the thermometer to make sure it's 
trip to 160 in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna make a uh, cheese sauce to go on top of my fish rolls. So I'm just gonna melt some butter with a bit of uh, heavy whipping cream. I'm just gonna do that in the microwave. And I'll slowly add the Parmigiano Reggiano. Ah, I'll add the Parmigiano Reggiano slowly. So the butter is melted with the heavy cream. That was like 20 seconds in the microwave. I'm just gonna add a little of this Parmesan and then microwave it for probably another 20 seconds and keep adding it till it gets to the consistency and taste that I want. All right, that should be good enough. And some of my cheese sauce. Okay, let's go give this a try. Let's give these a try. Oh, that's really good. So, um, this one was the top side and that was the bottom side. So we'll see if there's any difference in flavor between the two, even though they look different. So they are a little different, and I think that's mainly because they're different size uh, rolls. So yeah, the smaller one's a little drier than the bigger one. Um, but they're both really good. The main thing I noticed though, is the garlic sauce is so delicious, and I wanted to try that on a fish dish, but it doesn't really come through as as well as when you're eating it with say some uh, chicken or whatever. But you definitely have a garlicky taste to the fish here. Yeah, that was really good. <clears throat> I definitely keep a starry flounder if I get one. But yeah, that was delicious. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.